at another time on TSA. In my previous episode, I made mention of resource sensitization and some of us would want me to throw more light on what resource sensitization is. And so today we are going to dwell on what happens to a pregnant woman with a resource negative blood. What is resource sensitization in pregnancy? Each one of us is either resource negative or resource positive. We all have red blood cells. Red blood cells either have antigen or do not have antigen, what we call the marker. Now, when your red blood cell reveals that there is no marker on it, then you are resource negative. When it has an antigen or a marker on it, then it is resource positive. Now, when a pregnant woman comes and her blood test reveals that there is a marker or antigen on the red blood cell, then she is positive. When she doesn't have any marker on her red blood cell, then she is negative. When she is negative, it is a concern to us because chances are that baby's red blood cell will actually have a marker, which is resource positive. When it happens, their blood are going to mix. When it mixes like that, the, the antigens are not the same. This is negative and this is positive. And so the mother's immune system is actually going to produce antibodies over time. And these antibodies are going to fight the red blood cell of the baby. And baby is going to have what we call anemia or jaundice. Usually, it takes a while for the red blood cells to actually produce. And so the first baby or the first child escapes this reaction or this adverse reaction that comes with it. But your subsequent resource positive pregnancies, baby is actually going to suffer from this anemia, jaundice and other severe conditions. So basically, this is what we call immune, this is what we call resource sensitization. Your immune system response to this is what we call resource sensitization. So what actually causes it in pregnancy? So this basically happens when a woman with a resource negative blood is pregnant with a developing fetus with a resource positive blood. In most cases, their blood will not mix up because it takes a while for the antibodies or the mother's immune system to produce the antibodies. So usually for the first child, she escapes or he or she escapes this adverse reaction like I have explained. But with subsequent resource positive blood, baby is actually going to suffer from jaundice, anemia and other serious problems of what we call resource diseases. Notes. Resource sensitization is one reason it's important for every pregnant woman to see the midwife or the doctor during her first trimester. That is when you realized you were pregnant till about 12 weeks. Know that this resource sensitization does not have any warning symptoms at all. It is only through blood tests you will know that you have it or at risk of it. If you are at risk, it can almost always be prevented. If you're already sensitized, treatment can always help protect your baby. When the woman is resource negative, the doctor or midwife will probably treat her as though the baby is resource positive, irrespective of the blood type of the father, just so they can all be on a safer side. How is it diagnosed? This is only diagnosed through blood tests at first prenatal visits during pregnancy. When blood tests actually shows that you are resource negative, but are not sensitized, one, what we do is that antibody tests will be repeated between 24 to 28 weeks of pregnancy. If it still shows that you are not sensitized, then you don't need the antibody test until delivery. But in any case, if the pregnancy exceeds 40 weeks of gestation or 40 weeks of pregnancy, you have the antibody test again. And also, if the placenta separates from the baby, it is called placenta abruptio. You might as well need the antibody test again. And other forms of indications, your doctor or midwife will tell you when you will need the antibody test during pregnancy before delivery. At birth, baby will have blood tests to actually find out if she is resource positive or resource negative. If she is resource positive, mother will again have antibody tests in order for us to rule out if she is sensitized or not at late pregnancy or at birth. How do we prevent sensitization? If you are resource negative but not sensitized, 
you get one or more shots of resource immune globulin from your midwife or doctor. This is what we give to our women with resource negative blood. This prevents sensitization in nearly all women who uses it. You can as well take the resource immune globulin shots at 28 and 34 weeks of pregnancy and also at birth when the blood test of the baby reveals resource positive. Also to prevent future sensitization in pregnancy, resource negative women who experience miscarriage are as well given the resource immune globally. How is resource sensitization prevented? When you are resource sensitized during pregnancy, all you need is regular testing in order to know if baby is okay. You may also need to see a doctor who specializes in high risk pregnancies. Treatment of the baby is largely dependent on how severe the red blood cell is lost or how severe the anemia is. If anemia is mild, all you need is regular testing in order to know if baby is okay. Baby will not need any special treatment after delivery. If anemia is getting worse, then at delivery, baby will need blood transfusion. If anemia is severe, baby may need blood transfusion while still in the womb. This will help keep baby healthy until the time he or she is matured for delivery. In conclusion, in the past, resource sensitization was very deadly for babies. Now, improved testing and treatment mean that babies with resource diseases even survive and thrive after birth. So there's no cause for alarm. Come and be treated. Thanks for watching this episode and I know you have enjoyed it so far. Please make sure to subscribe to this channel, like, share, and comment. Don't also forget to leave your questions in the comment section below and I will attend to you. Until then, see you. It's a bye.